So we're going to open up the Tuesday, February 18, 2020, Board of Selectmen meeting. Can we please stand the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so um, the first thing we have is um, we have resident comments and we have um, Jane Dempsey to talk about Abaday. Thank you so much for this opportunity to make this announcement. Um, I'm Jan Dempsey, 33 Uptack Road in Groveland. And I just wanted to share that we're very excited to be celebrating um, in Groveland this year, Arbor Day, which has been um, in the book since 1872, and also the 50th anniversary of the first Earth Day. And we've planned a few activities, so I just want to make this announcement and then I'll give you a handout so you'll have all the dates that you can um, refer to. So the first thing that um, we're hoping to do is to plant 100 trees in Groveland for Arbor Day. And um, what, we're, what we're doing is we're giving the first 100 residents who apply for a tree, a pre-tree seedling, to plant in their yard. And um, basically they can sign up for this tree seedling either at the library, there's a sign-up sheet, there's a sign-up sheet in the conservation office and also online at um, grovelandgreen.org. So there's three ways to sign up. And then what we'll be doing is giving out the seedlings on the actual Arbor Day itself, which is Friday, April 24th. We'll be giving them out at the library from 12 to 5. And then again on Saturday, the 25th, from 10 to 2 for people who can't make it on Friday. So we're really excited about that. We've had a lot of people who've started to sign up, so I just want to make sure others have the opportunity to do that if they want to. And then um, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of, of Earth Day, the first thing we have planned so far is a nature walk at Meadow Pond Reservation on Earth Day itself, which is Wednesday, April 22nd. And that walk will be at 3 p.m. And we're hoping to do a lot of identification of flora and fauna around the pond that day. Then on April 24th, we're going to have an Earth Day cleanup, and we're hoping to meet at the library right here at Town Complex at 3 p.m., and then we'll disperse to various locations to keep this town tidy. And then the third event that we have planned is a nature walk at Town Forest, and that one is to be Saturday, April 25th at 10 in the morning. So we're hoping by having different things at different times, we can include a lot of people from town in these events. So if anybody has questions too, they can go to the website, groblingreen.org, and um, all the events are listed there. The sign up for the trees is there. And also if they have questions, they can email me at groblingreen at gmail.com. Well, thank you. How big are the trees? They're tree seedlings. Seedlings, so like yes. six inches, eight they're inches. They're not. They're not huge, yeah. um, but they're everything starts small. So, yeah. right. You know, we're, I think it, it's a great pro uh, project too for people with kids. Yeah, great to get get these trees planted. Do you have any Are there any other questions? Yeah. What kind of trees? So we have red maple, white oak, Fraser fir, and American mountain ash. So we have four different kinds. How big do they grow when they? Oh, each one is going to be a little different at the height, but they'll be full-grown, mature trees when they mature. How many years, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> Probably at least. But they will grow. I <laughs> they'll imagine. They'll grow a little bit every year. Everything grows. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and they're, they're, you know, native. We try to have native species in, that were good for wildlife and, um, you know, grow well in this neck of the woods. So that was another consideration that we, we had in choosing those trees. Now, will you be planting any of these trees on the town property in places where um, maybe there they might, may be? There might be some at VC Park being planted, but primarily we're hoping <coughs> that residents, you know, will want to put Private them in their, in their yard. Great. Thank you. Okay. You good, Ed? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. yeah thank you for, uh, uh, I know I spoke, you spoke about it earlier, and uh, uh, 
Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. I'll, I'll give you a copy of the date so you, you have yeah. that. And I appreciate the time. Thank you very oh, much. Oh. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for giving us all the heads up. Okay. And the seats are on Wait. the back of that. Good, thank you. Do you want me to leave two for the other two floors? Please. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so we don't have Vanessa. Oh, go ahead. So uh, this week, Saturday night at uh, VZ Park, we're having an event. It's called Mardi Gras, Celebrate Mardi Gras. And it goes from 4 to um, 6 p.m., oh, sorry, 4 to 8 p.m. on this Saturday, February 22nd. Uh, tickets you can get at the door, or you also can get them at vzpark.org, the VZ website. And it sounds like a real exciting time. There's going to be live music and dancing and uh, events for the kids. So it's fun for the whole family. So if you're looking for something to do here in Groveland on Saturday night, head on down to BZ Park for Mardi Gras night. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, you're going to be dancing? I'm not going to uh, be there. Mike, oh. Mike, <laughs> Mike. 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 wants sorry. I think you got to say your name too for me, for, to, for the record. Well, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, about that. Nobody knows yes. you. No, I know. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Dempsey, 33 Uptack Road. Sorry about that. Uh, how much were the tickets? Well, that's a good question. Let's. See. I thought it would be. You uh, I believe <laughs> that it's um, five dollars. Five dollars each. Well, that's a bargain. Yeah. Great. Any family discounts? <laughs> Get your ticket early online. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. Thank you. Okay. So moving on, Bill, can you read and for the warrants to be approved? Certainly. Uh, approval to um, pay payroll warrant 20-33 in the amount of one hundred and sixty-eight thousand eight hundred twenty-nine dollars and eighteen cents. I'll, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Approval to pay bill warrant 20 33 in the amount of $1,034,339.29, which breaks down as follows Town $90,029.37, Water and Sewer $15,064.73, Payroll Withholding $3,732.53. Light bill sixty eight thousand two hundred and twenty dollars and ninety nine cents, grants and revolving thirty three thousand two hundred fifty six dollars eighty nine cents, Pentucket assessment eight hundred and twenty two thousand forty one dollars and seventy five cents, and capital nineteen hundred and ninety three dollars even. Can you get a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Okay. So Can I just clarify one thing? Yep. I think it's a ten dollars a person. Oh, sorry. For the Mardi Gras. Okay. It's still a bargain. Okay, moving 12 on. 12 and under a free. Moving on, we to um, need to approve the minutes from the January 21st, 2020 meeting. Can I get a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, minutes from the January 21st meeting. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Okay, now we go on to we have the appointment and reappointment of Barbara Barlow at 25 Moody Street, Haverhill, as a reserve dispatcher slash lockup keeper, effective March 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2020. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Barbara Barlow uh, uh, reserve dispatcher and lockup keeper, effective March 1st, Second. 2020. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, uh, yes. Um, okay, so moving on, we have discussion and possible vote. We have the first Beth Conniff town clerk to discuss the her FY21 budget request. Okay, I'm Elizabeth Conniff, 211 7 Star Road. You might need to speak into the microphone a little bit better. Thank you. 
I don't know if you have questions for me regarding the budget, if that's the way you generally lay it out. Um, there are increases in the budget uh, due to the, um, we purchased the new software last year and there are annual expenses um, to maintain the software and that's in the, um, the general expenses and then the bulk of the expenses that are increasing for 2021 will be for three elections that we'll have. There's only one election in the 2020 budget. There needed to be two elections. I mean, there, were one, there's, there should be two elections in the 2020 budget and there's only one. And there will be three elections in the 2021 budget. Anyone have any questions? Uh, no, it seems to make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Bill? No. Um, you know, it is what it is. You have right. elections. Right. It's a greater cost. So you can expect a transfer at special town meeting to cover um, the additional cost of the special, not special, primary um, on March 3rd. So right. once we get through that and know what the actual cost is, we can make a transfer at, at special town meeting to cover her um, election because there will be a deficit in that line. Wait, how did we cover the last years? I know one of them. We transferred oh, for that did. as well. Okay. All right. I think we're good, right, Bill? Ed? Yes. Yeah. And oh. they also approved early voting for this, the primary, so there will right. be the cost of that as well. Right. Yeah. That starts w this Saturday? No, it starts on the 24th. <coughs> it runs um, a regular work week, so it's Monday through Friday, the 24th through the 28th of February. And then election is on March 3rd, the Tuesday. And we have new voting machines this year, right? We do. And have they been tested out? Have you they have been tested, and then I have to make the actual test for the state, um, and we're going to do that this Friday. And are they just as easy to use for the for the voters? Yes. Yeah. With a longer ballot, there's a little bit more hesitation, but it really isn't much. It's, it works very well. How about the counting process? Is that it's uh, excellent? Much better than the old machines. Yes, it drops um, hand count. The hand count you put into the back yourself. It drops any write-ins into a special basket so that you can pull out and count, and then everything else falls into the, the larger bin so that you don't have to worry about opening it, especially with our population size. Right. So it will be sealed shut the entire voting process. Great. Sometimes it used to jam up before. Some of the ballots started to get stuck in the box. Now they'll all drop far enough down, so we shouldn't have that issue. Do you think the counts will be quicker th this year? I, you don't really have any experience to draw from because you didn't run the election last year, right? No, I do not. Yeah, so um, that's a tough answer. Tough question. We're hoping for a very efficient evening. I have um, some good staff that will return, and then we have a lot of new poll workers. So we always have great staff. It's the machines I worry about. <laughs> no, they seem to be. Um, they have an excellent track record, so the machines are well rated. Great. May I just add to that? Um, so Beth will have two wardens, one for each precinct, that will actually be at the ballot box. So if there's any questions, if anyone has any issues, they will be. That's their primary focus. Um, and when we had the initial training on the new machines, um, they stated pretty much at 8, eight o'clock, once the last ballot is in, you press that button and you're going to get a tape with the printout pretty quickly. And then um, she would be able to give the preliminary results pending any write-ins. So if there's any close count, you'd wait for the results of the write-ins, but it should be fairly quickly based on <coughs> what they've showed us. So I think, I think it will be um, right after closing time that you'll start to get results. Mm -hmm. right. should be very quick. Right. Um, how does it um, handle the uh, absentee ballots? The similar absentee ballots are the same. They have to be entered by the poll workers on the day of the election. So, so they get run through the machine. Right. <coughs> early voter and absentee are the same. Great, great. Super. You good, Ed? Uh, yeah, I'm good, yeah. Well, thank you. Great job. And, um, thank you. Thanks. It seems like you've, you've um, buckled in and you're doing pretty good. You've got things under control in there after you're getting close to your first year. Yes, we're working on it. Yep, good. thank you. <laughs> well, no complaints. That's a good thing. That's Doing excellent, I'd <laughs> say. Yeah. Thank, thank you again. You. All right, thank you. Okay, so now we move on. We have um, Rebecca Olam, town planner, discuss her FY21 budget and salary increase request. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me, Rebecca Oldham, town planner. Um, to start with the um, submittal, I had put together a memo which I believe was enclosed as part of your packet with the reason for the uh, proposed increase. Um, I won't get too involved in what was listed there, but just to highlight a few items. The main thing is that not, not long ago, the town didn't have a town planner, so there was really no 
understanding of exactly what the position brought and what the role really entailed. And I believe that since my hire in 2018, I've shown the value of what it is to have a town planner here in town. Uh, specifically, I've helped the planning department become more efficient and responsive. I've become a resource for residents and developers. I've streamlined the application, review, and permitting process, and I've developed communication among departments and staff for planning and development projects. I have also received over $98,000 in grant funding with an additional $15,000 pending, and these grants focus on a variety of different issues, being transportation, environment, town center, and accessibility. You'll see that I'm requesting a 5% increase on my base salary. However, before you, you'll see it's listed as 7%, and that is because the remaining funds of my salary are supplemented from community preservation funds, and those are funds that I must advocate for uh, on an annual basis in order for additional projects. So those are actually projects that I'm taking on in addition to my other duties. Uh, this increase was approved and voted on by the planning board. Um, there was going to be a couple members present, but with school vacation, they weren't able to attend. Anyone have any comments? Mm. I, 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 personally, I think you've been one of the best highs this town has ever made. Um, there isn't anybody I've talked to in town that's dealt with you that hasn't uh, been extraordinarily complimentary of you, um, of your knowledge, of uh, your patience. Um, and of your um, ability to uh, get things done. Um, I hope we can keep you till you retire and then you teach your kids how to do this so we can hire <laughs> them too. Uh, that's my only comments. Okay. I, I think she's fantastic. Ed? Uh, she, she's done a great, uh, great job uh, and helped out a lot of developers. I, I haven't heard any complaints. Uh, I know she worked with uh, different departments, works works with the different departments pretty well uh, and uh, I, I, good, just good things you can say about it. Yeah, thank you. I agree with both of them. I've heard nothing but good. I don't come in town hall a lot, but I keep an eye, believe it or not, on what goes on and I know what you've done and what you can do and capable of doing and the grants that you've, you have brought in. Hope you, kept, you keep pressing forward with that. I think you will. I think you're driven. So that's good. No, I have no, no complaint and I have no problem Staying okay for a race, I, I, I think it's good. I, I, I called it the Miss Mona Lisa Vito of town planning when she first interviewed for the job, and I don't think my opinion has changed at all. Extraordinary. Thank you. I thank appreciate you the kind words. All right, thank you. Appreciate the, the great work you're doing. Keep it up. I mean, that's compliments are a byproduct of your hard work. It really is. Thank you. And Rebecca, you should know that I know at least one of your board members did reach out to. Um, the chairman to advocate on your behalf. So yeah. even though they weren't here, one of them did reach out. Thank you. All right, thank you. There's no other questions about any of the other budgetary items or? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, it. thank you. Okay, now we have the um, FY21 budget discussion. So again, this is just on there if you have discussions. Um, I don't know how in depth you wanted to get without a full board, but if you had questions on the budget, any items that you have reviewed, uh, the finance board is cruising along. They've met with about half of the department so far um, with more meetings scheduled for next week. They're meeting twice in March. Uh, they plan to wrap up their um, departmental reviews on March uh, 18th, I believe. So. If you have questions or comments, um, we're still waiting on numbers. Uh, we have preliminary state numbers. Um, I don't have health insurance, liability insurance. Those are the big ones. Uh, we do have our retirement appropriation, so that's solid. Um, but some of the big things uh, we're still waiting on, waiting to see how our recycling is going to pan out this year. Um, our average recycling bill in the past has been about $2,400 a month. We're up to $5,300 a month for recycling costs. Uh, as the costs just keep increasing. So we are keeping an eye on that uh, to see where we will end up. I was making um, my list of transfers for special town meeting today and that sort of, um, I'm keeping an eye on that one. Um, so far we're doing pretty well in fiscal 20 with snow and ice. Um, I don't think they went out today or they'll go out I'm sure overnight because it's supposed to freeze so 
they may be out salting and sanding in the morning, but uh, we're doing fairly well um, so far this year. Um, but any questions so far on? So one? as far as the OPEG and, and the um, retirement, that's all funded the same as we've done before. Yep. So we're still there. Yep. Um, the highway you said was good. So go back to the rubbish. Yep. If it's getting to the point where this is starting to get costly like it is, should we take a look at trying to, I know I've said it before and people said I'm nuts, but bring it in-house? Well, it's not so much the trash, it's the recycling that's costing us. Um, I don't know that we would have any better um, have or any cost savings um, by bringing recycling in-house. How's the trash numbers? Uh, the trash is pretty much spot on. We pay a um, set per ton um, fee. Right. Uh, that does not fluctuate. Recycling fluctuates with the recycling market, and it's a commodity, and it right. just rises, and uh, it just continues to rise. So, so to keep that number in the budget under control, <coughs> you know what I mean? How do we go about it? You know, it's fluctuating all the time. Well, I'm not going to say publicly what people should do, but <laughs> yeah, uh, know. to recycle, it's hurting us. <laughs> um, so I don't know. We um, Every city in town is in the same situation. You can open up the newspaper. Towns are struggling with it. I mean, cities are. So a lot of towns have got to the point where they're taking the, and they're putting it into a dumpster and it's going into the dump. It's cheaper to put it in the dump than it is to recycle it. It is, yes. And yes. that's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. And I understand people like to recycle, but it's costing us more to recycle than it is to throw it in the rubbish. That is correct. So. That is correct. Now, my point was if you, put a, if you put some recycling containers down the highway garage and people throw it in there, it's still going to cost you money to take it out of there and get rid of it. And truthfully, I think it's going to end up in the, in the dump someplace and we're still going to be charged for the fees. But um, I know I got a few calls from people. They were aggravated seeing the, rubbish, the recycling going to the rubbish truck, and it was a week that was snowing or whatever. But at one point, we got to take a, a hard look at that, I think, to keep that number yeah, I agree. Um, so to the people that complain about that, people have to remember we do use a co-collection truck. We use one truck for both trash and recycling. So when people see recycling going in what they think is the trash truck, I can tell you waste management has assured me it is the co-collection truck that they're dumping it into. It is not co-mingling trash and recycling. Mm -hmm. um, I think our contract with waste management is up 2022, I believe. I think we still have two more years to go. Um, you know, between now and then, it's worth a discussion on what the town wants to do. I'm not sure if anything's going to change in the next two years as far as recycling goes or if those costs are going to get under control. But, um, it, it, I mean, it's dramatically increasing. So Right. Well, I don't know. What, do you guys have any thoughts? If you recall, I think I sent everyone here on the board an, an article about this about a year ago. Um, it, it, it's really... The dumping grounds for our recycling is no longer accessible to us. They don't want it. Um, it ends up in the Pacific Ocean is where it ends up most of it now. Uh, I sp in a meeting with um, Congressman Moulton, uh, it was discussed. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a mass state law that you, you have to recycle. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure throwing it in, in, in the trash where it ends up in a landfill is the answer. It's, um, it, it's, it's a difficult thing to manage, but I, I'm not sure how much can be done about it as long as it's, it's, it's mandated by law. So I will just add, so it is not <coughs> mandated. We don't have mandatory recycling. In Massachusetts? Correct. The, the local town would have to accept a mandatory recycling, and we do not have that. So we, we have optional recycling. People are welcome to recycle, but it is not mandatory. Hmm. I was told at that meeting that it was in Massachusetts, so if it's not, then no, it is not. Then we should. Is there any other option with the, with the company? Do they have any other option, any other option to get us out of paying this ridiculous money? I, I doubt it. I mean, I can speak to them, but again, every other city and town across the country, oh, I know. we're in the same situation. Right. Um, you think they'd be thinking of a new way, you know, a new something new, you know? But well, this is this is basically the the, the the bill that's come due for having polluted the planet for so many oh, years. We've got to do something, and and this is the cost. It's it's unfortunate. Um, 
I, I don't know if abandoning it is the right thing to do either. I no. mean, e ecologically, it doesn't make sense. Environmentally, it, it's 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 destructive. So, right. Um, Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, the, the everybody knew eventually this was going to happen. It's a case of supply and demand. With the recycling, with all the cities and towns are recycling. Uh, there's more than what they can actually use, so uh, the cost is going up because they can't get rid of it. And uh, yeah, just to expand upon what, what Denise had said about the, about the vehicles, there's, there's, as long as the uh, split load truck is working, they, uh, half of it goes into the uh, uh, recycling, half goes uh, is, is trash. And they're throwing it in the same side, but it's a different hopper. And if if that new truck, they call it, isn't, isn't working and it's been broken down, it seems like quite often, although this week it was working, uh, they usually come around and pick up the, uh, the trash first and then uh, they dump the load and they come back, same truck, and pick up the recycling. So it looks like it's going, uh, it, it looks like it's going into the uh, uh, trash truck, which it is, but it's, it's specifically for uh, uh, recycling the second time they come through and it does go into the same truck when they uh, have the uh, so-called new truck, uh, uh, the side loader, rather than the rear loader. Uh, it's just a case of supply and demand. If the, uh, if the demand was up, then we'd be able to get rid of it a little easier, but the, uh, the demand is low because they got so much of it, so the prices reflect that. Uh, I'm all set. Okay, all set, though. Okay. No, Anything else, Denise, in the FY21 or anyone else? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Um, we still we still haven't got water and sewer and what do you vote tax uh, budget yet? So water and sewer, they are voting their final budget at their March 2nd meeting. Um, they told me they will have it for me that night yeah. uh, on March 3rd, um, March 2nd. Um, Whittier, I usually don't get until closer to the end of March. Okay. Anything else, Ed? Uh, no, that's it. Bill? Um, I hate to jinx us. How far approximately are we ahead on the snow removal budget? Uh, there's 76000 left in the account as of today. Okay. So we just pray for we don't get four slammed with four consecutive nor'easters like we did a few years ago. We'll be in good shape. Yes, we should be in good shape. Um, again, unless something. But we also increased that budget last year. We did increase the so budget. So that's why we're not running out now. So yep. Yep. But anything we don't spend is a pickup. Correct. Anything we don't spend will either be used to cover year end deficits or close to free cash. Right. Yep. And it, there's a, looking at the uh, highway budget, I think there was a, a, about a 10% increase from, uh, from last year uh, based upon uh, it projected additional costs. Uh, maybe that's something that we ought to look at to, to bring it up a little bit higher. For years, we, we only did 100000 for uh, for snow and ice removal because it's one the only it's the only budget that you can overspend and uh, we only did a hundred thousand uh, I think we got it up to if memory serves me correctly about 220 uh, this year but I I think we uh, maybe a little higher I think we ought to go up a little bit higher uh, we raised it a little bit more last year I think we ought to raise it a little bit more this year and if if you don't spend it then it goes back comes back to the uh, the general fund uh, or, or it could be transferred to, to uh, a different department but it's uh, it certainly would be better than uh, than was it last year because of a of a lousy year we uh, I think we had like five or six different requests to uh, 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 overspend the budget and uh, this year uh, is an unusual year we haven't had we haven't had much snow but a bad time is coming up when you, uh, when in, especially in the spring, when you get, when you get rain, and then at night it freezes, and they got to go out and uh, sand and salt. So, uh, I, just looking at that, I, I think we ought to go up, you know, at least another twenty-five, fifty thousand. Uh, well, we have Rennie coming in. I think around March second, somewhere around there, don't we, Denise? Yes. One of our meetings, and I think that's probably the good conversation to have when he comes in, with them. Um. Am I correct? On yes. Okay. Um, anything else? I, I'm all set. Okay, Bill. I'm good. 
Um, yeah, I think the rest of the conversation we can maybe wait till the other two members are here, maybe till they can talk about anything that's on their mind. Sure. Um, so moving on, we have um, a disclosure from Colin Stokes regarding a um, financial interest in 106 King Street. Um, approve and provide any comments. Anyone want to start? Go ahead, Denise. Um, so this is, as you'll see, um, Colin filled out this um, financial interest disclosure. Um, as the appointing authority, you are required to vote on it and provide um, comments back to him. Um, I would recommend at a minimum, I'm not sure what your discussion will be, but I would recommend at a minimum um, if you uh, accept his disclosure, it should be with the understanding that he recused himself from any conversations pertaining to 106 King Street. Um, that's in the water and sewer department and planning the pre-construction meetings, anything like that, he should not participate in uh, where he does have an interest in a property there. So that would be my recommendation to you all. Anyone want to say anything? That makes sense. And he, uh, if he has an interest in it, he shouldn't participate in any of the discussion. Maybe they could send somebody else from the uh, water, water board. It makes sense to me too. Um, get skin in the game. Mm -hmm. well, I think it makes sense as well. I mean, it won't muddy the waters, keep things clean. And I think if he bought a property anywhere in town, he'd run into the same situation. So if he's going to buy in town, it, it's going to be, it, it is what it is, you know. So he'll have to have someone else step in and what have you. My only question, if he's out there in the, out there doing any kind of water work, would that become a problem if he's out there doing any kind of on the road or whatever? Yeah, so I can tell you from preliminary discussions with Rebecca um, that at this point for 106 King Street, they're not even sure they're going to run water because okay. uh, the water main up King Street is not sufficient enough to provide the current ho household's water. Okay. Uh, so the plan is to no, wells. Um, install wells. Okay. Um, so they would not be on town water. Um, so, really so once the development is in, it really <coughs> wouldn't impact the water department right. or Collins' position is unless it something changed. Is it city soil? Nope, septic. So, um, it, so it shouldn't it have any high impact. Thing, high impact, yeah. Correct. Um, that is once it goes through the process and is right. built. Okay. Does anyone have anything else on that subject? Okay. No. So we, do we need a vote on anything? We just... Yes. Yeah, we okay. To, uh, uh, accept his uh, disclosure. Make a motion that we accept uh, with the conditions that he not participate in any of the discussions uh, regarding 106 King Street. Uh, second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Okay. All right, so moving on. Um, we have finance director proposal, general by bylaw amendment, division two personal policy plan non-contractual employees. Uh, so this goes back to a discussion we had at the last meeting when Kathy asked about the existing personnel advisory board. Um, there were two remaining members. One of them has moved out of town and the employee representative does not want to serve any longer. Um, she feels that this has been twice through the process, um, at least twice through the process with different boards and the process has stalled. Things haven't happened. She said she's felt, she feels that she's wasted a lot of time and it's not moving forward, she does not want to continue. So with that being said, what I'm putting before you would be a change to our general bylaw to just strike personnel advisory board and replace it with board of selectmen. Um, even still, the board of selectmen had the ultimate authority. You were just taking recommendations from the personnel advisory board. As you'll see from my general bylaw, um, really section 2-96, the adoption of policies is the process. Um, any employee may suggest policies for consideration. Um, it requires a public hearing, if you will, by the board. So it's not like something is just going to get in and be changed. It just makes it a little more efficient since we are having a hard time <coughs> finding people that want to serve and getting through the process. I think this way you can take sections at a time. Um, I can give you other copies of personnel policies, recommendations, whatever you'd like, and you all have the ultimate decision instead of trying to do the whole policy at once. Um, I think it might be a little easier to streamline. So. I figured I'd put this forward um, 
if you'll recall when Lisa was on the board, Lisa didn't want to have the selectmen make any changes because the bylaws clearly reference personal advisory board. This would just alleviate that situation and allow you to make changes. Okay, so yeah, that, that all makes sense. But when we had them before us before, we were down to a couple, just a couple minor things that they, they, we needed to discuss. I know, but at that point, they were down to two members, and one I, of them is I moved, get it, so. but could we pick up where they left off? Oh, you certainly could. You know what I mean? I think it was like um, retirement? PTO. PTO. And um, PTO was the biggest one. It was one of the small. It was something else, but I know we were down to two, two things that they were going to go back, and that I know they couldn't get the board. Everyone wasn't there. If we had those two things taken care of, we were good to go. So if we could, yeah, do what we need to do tonight, and then if we could maybe get that information back up again, take a look at it. I'll put that on two. the agenda and, and, yeah, that's and what I'm yeah. pull up I those mean, two bullet points, and then we can hash that out, I imagine, pretty right. quickly. Right. So the bylaw would have to go to town meeting um, because it is a bylaw change. But, yes, then it would give you, we could, um, I could go through the agendas and find the last draft and, and sort of the pending right. items. It was, there was only two pending items that we needed to iron out. And I want to say he's right. One of them was the PTO, and I thought something had, is that the retirement PTO? No, no that, one of them that had, had to, do to do with, with the way it's currently written. A person that started here on the first right, of the fiscal right, year I, right, had right. to wait 24 That's months right. in order That's to right. earn any right. any kind of right. time, which That's was, right. uh, it makes it almost impossible to hire right. anybody under the circumstances. Right. And well, part of the change, though, was we currently give vacation sick and personal as three different buckets of time. Right. They were recommending changing that to just here's the other 30 thing. days, do it, a, do exactly. it what you want, which I think is a little extreme personally because um, I think people have more than enough time they can take off. Um, but that was one of the sticking points was do we keep it vacation and fix the vacation policy right. to give people that's new exactly hires right. yep, or do we go to a yep. PTO m model and then if we went to a PTO model, how does that work for the right. existing Is employees? Is it one bucket or multiple buckets? And we had to figure out what to do with the existing employees and how their time would transfer. That was I know that was one of the biggest issues. I don't quite remember the other ones, but I know we have all the drafts. So. Okay. I think those were the biggest that sticking was, points, yeah. though. So why don't we pull that up? We'll vote tonight to do what we need to do. And then what we'll do is we'll get that on an agenda item. Do we need to get it done before town meeting? Uh, technically, you can't vote on it until out because you're not the – it requires the personal advisory board under our current bylaws. So you can do everything, but it really can't go into effect until After. town meeting accepts, accepts the change. This. Right. And then okay. – Okay, go ahead, Ed. Uh, no, we, we just mentioned that the uh, uh, employees, uh, representatives of the board, no longer wanted to uh, uh, to serve in that capacity. Did, did, did a note go out to all the other town employees that they were looking for somebody to uh, uh, take over that position? Because it it, it, it would be important for the, to, to get the employees uh, uh, somebody that they can talk to if there's a if there's a problem before. Uh, like a buffer between the uh, the employees and the board of selectmen, somebody that they could go to to uh, uh, make a complaint or uh, something of that nature, or, or, or advise something something that they don't think is right. When they were going through the process, we had we had a person here in town hall doing that. Yeah, for we them. did, but and now we that sent, person no longer wants to do we it. We sent uh, notification out originally, and no one stepped forward. Um, but I think that's what when when the board created my position as personnel director, I fill in as the buffer between the employees and the Board of Selectmen. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, um, so I, I'm wondering, can we, can we just run with what the personal advisory board had once given us without having to go through this and, and adopt, I mean, 90 percent of their changes we were in agreement with? You still have to go through the public hearing process because that's still part of the existing bylaw. You have to it's up it. to you. I mean, you're the authority. So if you want to do it before town meeting, and but you still have to have a public hearing and go through the process that is currently outlined. Okay. So we should probably get a motion to make, make the change that we need to make tonight. Someone want to make a motion? Yeah, I make a motion that we adopt the changes. Um, as amended in the um, Division Two Personal Policy Plan, non-contractual employees in sections uh, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.100, 2.101, 2.102, 2.103, 2.104, 2.105, 2.106, 2.107, 2.108, 2
2.93, 2.94, and 2.96, and 2.98. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, so moving on. We have vote to the boards. We need to approve the election warrant for the March 3rd, 2020 presidential primary. I'll make a motion that we approve the election warrant for March 3rd presidential primary. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. We need to approve the 2020 permit for the Pelosa Social and Sports Club doing business as Sports Plex Operations and Developer Association at 4 April Lane, number 31, Lexington, Mass., for the use of the strawberry fields and the cricket club from the April 20th, April 2020 to October 2020. From April 2020 to October 2020. So this is the cricket people that came to us before, and it must be they want to do a formal. No, so we issued a formal one last yep. year. When they came before you, you agreed to a minimum of a three-year commitment, but required an annual permit. Right, but um, they also So they we gave them a permit for 19, and now this is their permit for 2020. Okay. So can I get a motion for this? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, we approve the, the permit for the... Uh, Solar uh, Social and Sports Club, uh, the DBA Sports Complex Operators and Development Association. So, second, Bill? Uh, second. Yep. Okay, further discussion. Yeah. Um, when does the permit expire? Does it expire at the end of the fiscal year? No, it's calendar year, December. It's calendar year. Uh, in item three, so will they be leaving these? I mean, is it understood that they can leave these? Till December 31st, or will they be removing them at the end of their season? So technically, we're granting their season to be through October of 2020, so they would have to remove um, anything at the expiration of that permit. So I would say in October or by December. So okay. that being said... I can't leave it through the winter. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So hold on. Before that being said, I met them out there last weekend to, show, to go over the area again with them before they, they had this meeting tonight. And they're talking about putting in a 88 by 11. <coughs> and they talked that night when they came in here. They were it's it's um their pitching pitching pad type oh, thing. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. they can't remove that every year. That's something that's poured in concrete or poured in however they do it. Correct. They can't take that. But they, when I was with them Sunday, they asked about putting a shed in, and I said I don't know if you want to put a shed back here because it might get vandalized. But you're welcome to put it up against the back of my property and we could keep an eye on it. But that's about the only thing they were saying. They say they take everything with them. They're going to put a dumpster there, because I asked them about their rubbish. They're going to put a dumpster there. They're going to have rubbish barrels. I said, are you going to be putting in st um, stands or anything? He said, no, they're going to either sit on the grass or they bring their chairs. Um, they are going to buy a lawnmower or something, because they're going to mow it themselves. But he did say they want to burn it down and keep it low, because the ball has to go through the grass. They can't have high grass. So they were saying they need to either bring it there when they mow it or take it, you know, leave it in their shed. So that was still up in the air, but um, they didn't have too much they were going to leave behind, it didn't seem. Yes, and these are the conditions that you voted last year. No, no, I know, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, so nothing's changed. I'm trying to go over what I went over with them. Um, when I looked back in my notes, the, the discussion was, so if they put a porta potty, that had to come out when they were yep. done. Um, yep. And we did not discuss putting a permanent shed. So we discussed that if they put a shed and, and we decide to you know, no longer that they can use the property. Yep. They, it has hey, to be removed. And we also said, if they decide not to new, use the property, we did say, if you put in something permanent, their pitch pad, they had to take that with them. Because yes. I think I questioned them and said, if this is concrete or whatever, you plan on taking it? And they said yes. So once they vacate when this whole... When they're done. When That's going to be yeah, there until they they they're all done. Yeah. So in the process of talking to these two gentlemen on Sunday, they are going to make this like their national thing. They want to bring a lot of people and in, in, make this like their, their main field. So I had said to them, why don't you try to push the pitch down one end and not take the whole place up? But they told me they need 400 feet across and 500 feet the opposite direction. And then they said to me, well, 
it's not going to make it across the way. We're still a little shy. I said, you can't start cutting trees down. I said, you can't do anything here other than what you see. You can't be taken and opening up more land. So they did their measurements again. They come up with it by moving it toward the driveway more. But one thing I did tell them when I was here, there's a lot of coyote. <laughs> I don't think it's all dogs. Or there's a lot of coyote. We walk every year tiptoeing through the tulips. But, I mean, there's a lot out there. So they said they're going to keep it clean. They said they'll, keep, they'll go in there and clean it. So they were talking about possibly starting, I think he said March 2nd around, to start working on it. So I said, wait till what happened. We have did here tonight. So well, that's the human crazy. activity should cut down on the, on the coyotes. Yeah. Uh, you know, roaming that area. Um, the, you mentioned the dumpster though, mm -hmm. and they're going to. They're going to put a. They're going to put a dumpster there for their rubbish. Uh -huh. So when the people come with their bags and their food, they're going to have a trash dumpster there or something like that. Is what he said. Not a big one. I want to say it was like a one yard or something. Okay, and some they'll, they'll have chain the lids because he did say that. Yeah, and then. Um, Whoever they hire the dumpster from needs to have access to, right. to get in there. Right. And it's supposed well, to a did. shed. Have they eight, taught a six about by eight shed? Have they thought about or considered renting uh, one of those Connex? Um, I, they did say that, and I said it would be cheaper, and then you could remove it, come and right. go. But I didn't know if, if you put a container box out there, how that would look. I was just saying that you try to keep it. A shed might look more pleasing than having one of those boxes out there. You know what I mean? But we have them at the pines. Yeah, and you had them at Strawberry Field when PYF was well, down there. I know the guy. But if they remove it every fall, yeah, right? Well, then it's. Well, I'll have that conversation with them again. I didn't know if. It it's less permanent for the property, right? And it might save them. Well, I think the shed was just going to lay on top of the ground. It's only six by eight, and they were thinking a plastic one, like a Home Depot plastic one, is what they were saying. Yeah, and I'm sure if they came and said to you, we'd like to leave it through the winter, I, I'm sure the board would be amendable to that if there's right. no concerns. As long as you know they're coming back, though, though. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, just concerned about the dumpster. Uh, how often is that going to be uh, dumped? Any, any idea? I didn't ask them. It's, uh, it, it, that, might be important to, that might be important to know. You don't want, uh, you don't want food stuff or trash built up in, the, uh, in that dumpster. Uh, Especially with the with the coyotes there, uh, or any other animals, or the raccoons, uh, it it, uh, it should be regularly dumped, uh, whether it be once a week. Uh, uh, but I think they're only going to be playing out there if I think he said weekends. Weekends. Through May, um, starting March and through the end of April, and nothing again until the yeah. fall, maybe September, October. I think it was what they were saying. Not. So much, but I don't. I wasn't really sure. I can ask them. I yeah, because yeah, when we discussed it last year, they were going to be April to October, and that's what the permit is for. So if they're if they're starting in March, then we'll need to amend this to be March, because they told us the season. No, they wanted April to start getting October. their thing ready in March okay. for their April oh, beginning. Okay. That's what they wanted to do. Yep. But I, it didn't sound to me like they were going to be doing it in the summer months. But maybe I just misunderstood them. But I, we can mention the dumpster to them. Right. I agree with Selectman Watson's point. I I, I would. I would make it uh, at least once a week because that's going to be um, the animals are just going to ravage that. The trash will be, if they can get in there and they're pretty clever. Um, well, maybe they can come up with a new idea. Maybe they can take the garbage bags home with them. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll send them an email. Well, when I send them the permit, I can include that. Yeah, if you want to do that, yeah. Just say there was a concern about trash. Yep. Okay, so. Um, so no other further discussion? No. Okay. I'm good. And vote. All in favor? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So moving on, we have finance director's time. I just have two very quick items for you. Um, the first one is I've spoken with the fire chief, um, and he has informed me that the fire boat is on the back burner. Um, apparently, the association was not unanimously or even majority majority how do you say that a majority in favor mm -hmm. um, of the boat so they have put that on the back burner mm -hmm. um, and just a, a note for anyone that might be watching the utility field at the pines will not be available until September um, we are not permitting that field the spring or summer uh, we want to we have to do another seeding and fertilizing and we'd like the grass to grow similar to what we did at Bagnell to allow time for that to actually 
um, take um, with the new irrigation system. So we will not be permitting that until September for usage. That's all I have. Okay. So then we go to selectman time and report. We'll start with Ed. Um, I don't have anything except maybe we ought to uh, welcome our uh, new oh, no, uh, audio person that year. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 Brett Carlson. Uh, Welcome aboard. Well, put the camera on yourself <laughs> <laughs> so everybody can see you. <laughs> no, that's not you. <laughs> He's still well, learning. Yeah. Well, welcome aboard Good. and hope you love working for the town. <laughs> You got some tough shoes to fill. You good? Uh, uh, I'm almost there. I just want to say, oh my God, uh, I didn't even recognize him because he's grown up so much. He played baseball for me for two years. Oh, wow. Uh, his dad is probably one of the best baseball guys I've ever met. Uh, and his brother's a heck of a baseball player, too, a lefty, too. And I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. <laughs> you guys grow up so fast and change so much sometimes that. That's why I always tell you, hey, if you recognize me, come up and say hi, because I might not recognize you as you grow old. So welcome aboard. I'm glad you, uh, glad you took the position. I think you'll do a great job. Are you good, Ed? Yeah, I'm all set. Yep, thank you. Bill? Uh, I have nothing. Um, I had missed the last high school building committee meeting in order to attend my son's basketball game. Uh, and as I remember, the meeting ended before the game did, so I didn't even make it that far. It did, and actually we covered a lot. Um, I will just let people know they are going to do another round of neighborhood meetings for the um, homes in the general vicinity. They are open to the public, but uh, more so for the immediate neighbors. Um, people will see the contractor start mobilizing on the site in about April, uh, and the hope would be to break ground in May. Um, so we are on track. There are some filings due to the state. Uh, they actually just canceled our working group meeting for this week. Um, they're finalizing, they're reconciling the numbers right now, and the 60% um, construction documents are due to the state, I believe it's next week. Um, so things are moving along. Uh, we really didn't get into too much. At the next meeting, I believe, they plan to have the interior subcommittee go over what they're recommending, so that should be a pretty um, interesting topic. Um, they're moving through the CONCOM process in both towns, the planning board process in both towns, um, but things are definitely moving along. Uh, it actually works out well. Uh, I'm not sure if this board even knows that um, Sam Jocelyn, our building inspector, has left Newbury, and he is now with West Newbury. Um, so he is Groveland and West Newbury. So it actually works out that they have the same building inspector for both communities as part of this project. So that should streamline things a little bit on that end as well. So uh, it was a good, it was a productive meeting. We actually covered a lot in a <coughs> short amount of time. The, the only thing we couldn't get is we can't get National Grid to back off ownership of that electric feed. Nope. Which is unfortunate for Groveland Electric. I, th we, I think we could have provided much cheaper energy to that building. And, um, probably would have helped the, uh, the residents mm. uh, too in that, but National Grid's not going to give up their foothold in that, unfortunately. But we are going to sell them water. Good. So are you good with everything, Bill? I am. Okay. So I was going to, number one, introduce Brett, but Bill did it for me. Um, the second Actually, uh, the Mr. Uh, Watson. I'm sorry, Ed. I'm sorry. You had a, um, then I was going over some of the projects we had um, started and I was kind of overseeing. So the water department building, I talked to Colin uh, I, through Rennie and the upstairs floor has been cleaned out to the point where we can go ahead and do what we need to do. The stairway going in there has been repaired and um, safe to the point we can bring the stuff up in there for the storage. So that, that project seems like it's moving along and re almost ready to go. I had lost my dog behind my shop and I was going around looking for my dog and I went over and looked at the gun range and the looked and said, wow, the things aren't going, moving along. So I called and talked to Denise and I talked to the um, police chief and 
they needed to get the fence installed, so I called over to Parker Fence, and I believe the fence went in today. I talked to Rennie Carroll, the highway, and he's putting the fence in tomorrow, the next day. So that should be taken care of. And then I talked to Mike Wood, trying to move the Washington Street project along. He gave me Senator Tarr's office. I talked to, I think it was Mike, but Denise thinks it's AJ, but maybe we'll call him AJ Mike. <laughs> and he's saying that he wanted to have a conference call tomorrow at two o'clock with me and Mike. So we're trying to move that along as well. Mike is out of the country though, so. Well, I tried saying that, but he, he did email him, so he was waiting for an email back from Mike. Um, and um, that's pretty much it that I have. So moving on, we'll go to old business, unfinished business, starting with Bill. I have none at this time. I have nothing, Ed. Uh, nothing. Um, oh. Oh. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Uh, I missed the last meeting, so uh, can somebody fill me in and bring me up to speed on the cable contract? Are we? Have we progressed anywhere with that? So after two meetings ago, um, after the public hearing, um, I turned everything over to Bill Hewig. Yep. Um, I know he's spoken to Kathy over at Comcast. Um, I'm not sure where it is in the process, but they have spoken. Um, I've gotten some documents from Comcast, um, the transcripts from the public hearing, uh, which I cannot give you because it's not public information, so I can't put it in an agenda packet. If you'd like to see it, I have it. Um, but it's actually copyrighted under the transcriptionist's copyright. Um, so they are working on that and they are making progress. I just don't know to what um, stage, but I'll get an update from him. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so um, do we have any other items not reasonably anticipated at this time of posting? Ed? Uh, nothing. I have nothing, Bill. I have nothing at this time. Okay, so we go to correspondence. We have Form 500 for the 2019 Comcast containing information on the customer video service related issues. Information from the police chief regarding a matter involving Fadi Isas, a class two auto license holder. Response from the water and sewer questions that arose at the January 21st meeting. And we have the minutes from the February 3rd, 2020 meeting. And that was pretty much it for there. And that's it for the meeting, I believe. It's about 726, is it? 728. 728. Yeah, I'll move for adjournment. Okay, second. Second. All in favor? That's it. The record time, Bill. Um.